hunting season is almost here. While I wish that was a recent kill and that I had already traveled out of state somewhere, such is not the case. We are one week away, in fact, less than five days away from opening day here in Ohio. And that is a deer that I just got out of the deep freeze. Uh, to be frank, I shot him a couple years ago, hadn't been able to figure out exactly what I wanted to do with him, whether it was a Euro mount or, or getting mounted, shoulder mounted. Um, and I just pulled him out of the deep freeze, figuring, you know what, I'm just gonna do a Euro mount for now. Um, the wife said, the missus said, you've got enough stuff going on on the walls. And right now I can't necessarily disagree with her, but you better believe I'm gonna try to find another one this year to shoulder mount. Anyways, um, with hunting seasons opening up across the states, um, a lot of places are already open. We're gonna be opening soon. We thought it would be a good idea with all the new rules and regulations that seem to be popping up every year, Ohio is no different, um, on transporting carcasses and deer parts across state lines, etc. We thought it'd be a good idea to get together with the local taxidermist, Mr. Josh Burkholder of Burkholder Taxidermy, to go over how to cape and or skull cap your deer. That way if you're traveling out of state and you want to come back into Ohio or wherever the case may be and you need to cape your deer out, well now you're not going to know how. Um, you know, yes, you might hit a local taxidermist in the state that you're visiting and kill your deer in, but you may also want to uh, do your own thing. So we thought it'd be a good idea with all the regulations that seem to be hitting every year with the spread of disease, CWD. Here in Ohio, there are certain do's and don'ts. Um, you can't bring any brain tissue back You've got or spinal tissue um, or the spinal column for that matter. So we thought it'd be a good idea to get together with Josh, go over all the rules and regulations, and have him show us how to cape out a deer. So we're going to head over to his place, pick up Chad, and uh, we'll see you here in a little bit. Oh Satan, oh Satan, please leave me alone. I'm going to see Jesus in my heavenly home. I'm walking this highway, dark though it may be, far in the distance, the sea turning deep. on scene. As I mentioned earlier, we were headed over to Burkholder Taxidermy with Josh Burkholder to talk about caping deer, uh, skull capping deer, and all the new regulations that you have to go through, that he's got to go through, and that we as hunters now have to go through uh, to help prevent disease. The threat of CWD is out there, it's real, and just here in Ohio we've, we've changed things in the last couple of years, so Josh is going to take us through that whole process on his stuff and what we as hunters, when we travel out of state, uh, have to do with our deer. So thanks for having us, man. Yes. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming, Josh. He's kind of our taxidermy guy uh, for Chad and I here locally. And uh, we're gonna go over some things. Yep. Uh, like Josh said, uh, there's some changes, uh, especially for Ohio, a lot of states are gonna jump on board White Sounds, uh, CWD being the big one. Um, kind of a buffer last year, getting a word out, but if, if you're out of the state of Ohio, uh, the state's wanting the deer to be completely caped, skull capped, no nervous tissue, um, deep bone coming in. Um, from my standpoint as a taxidermist, uh, caping, uh, making sure that the deer's prepped right for your taxidermist is the biggest thing. Um, it's it's doable. A lot of guys get nervous about it. Sure. Um, but we're going to go through the process today and uh, 
hopefully help you guys out a little bit. Right. Now, when you say spinal tissue, mm -hmm. I believe is what you said, that yep. includes spinal column, brain tissue. Brain tissue. Yep. So you got to remove all of that yep. before you bring a deer from out of state. Yes. And is that any state? Any state. Any state. If it's whitetail, mule deer, elk, caribou, moose, anything in the cervid family falls under these regulations. So right. um, it's not just a deer. If you're going moose hunting, elk, any of them, same process. Sure. So. Okay. Um, well, cool. Well, we, again, we appreciate you. I, it's something I've never done. I've never caped my own stuff out. I've always been interested in doing it just mm -hmm. from an interest standpoint and intrigue. But now it's kind of a requirement to yep. go out of state. So yep. it's, it's a good thing to know. So. And, uh, you know, uh, one thing to add on that, uh, if anybody's got questions or what, call your tax terms. Right. Okay. Um, it's not set in gold. This is how you got to cape it. This is how I prefer to cape it. And I'll touch on that a little bit when we get going. Um, but your tax taxidermist um, might want it skinned a different way than what I do. Sure. Um, this will get you through. Sure. This will meet all your requirements. So. In a crunch. In a crunch. Yeah. Crunch I mean, you'll be good. So. All right. Go from there. Cool. Well, we don't want to hold Josh up. He's he's a busy man. So, so we're going to get to work here and show you how this is done. So Josh has already got this deer skinned out um, up to the neck, uh, four or five inches of neck meat left in the deer. This is typically how we will receive them. Sure. Um, that being said, uh, fairly simple. Uh, what, what we're looking for is get your hide laid out. Um, you can leave the whole hide together like this mm -hmm. and cape it. Uh, your taxidermist probably be tickled pink to have the whole thing and he can make the cuts as far as the length of cape. Uh, so we got it flipped on the back side where you see the back of the deer. Um, really simple. What I'm looking for, if you come dead center between the ear butts or where your ears come out and right in between your burrs and make that a central point. Typically, it's called a V-cut. Okay, I'm going to come right behind the burr of the antler and I'm going to drop dead center between the ear butts. From there, I'm going to split it right down the back side of the cape. I use just a simple little bird beak, uh, skin and knife. Uh, it's got a curved blade to it. They're fairly inexpensive. Uh, if you get online, any of your taxidermy supply companies, um, you're looking at five, six bucks for a knife. So, great tool. Uh, sorry about that. True edge sharpener, edge maker sharpener. Um, Biggest pet peeve is not having a sharp knife, so get your blade nice and sharp. Um, so we're coming to the deer, and I take my sharp edge out, actually, back side of the burr, so the dull, dull part of the blade is against your antler. Hook underneath the hair, so you're under the hide. So I'm working dead center there. You can see where it's split open. Come to your other side. You can feel it. You'll push down in and feel the skull. Same thing. Okay, we're going to open that hydrate up. Come check your other side. And a lot of times I'll feel right in there. Okay. So I got my V flap. I just skin that right on back. For the guy that's running the knife the first time, okay, always keep your sharp edge kind of away from your skin so you don't cut holes in your skin. The more you get used to running it, the easier it's going to be. Um, so I got the flap of my V cut open. From there, I'm going to go ahead and unzip per se right down the back of the deer. Again, my, my edge is under the skin. I'm not cutting hair. Okay, they call that long incision. You open it right up. Again, talk to your taxidermist. Some taxidermists look like a short incision. Okay, you would come just past the meat of the neck. Mm. Um, so he's opened up. I like to open them up. Gives me a little bit more leverage with the hide as I get skinning. 
So he's opened up there. Now I'm going to skin back these earbuds. So just not so much grab the hair as much as grab the skin. And you can see where that muscle and then you got fascia along the skin. Just follow that fascia. Kind of pulling the height as you go. So I got it opened up. You can see where your ears join to your deer head. Them will get cut. So what I'm going to do is feel where it joins there into the bone. Light pressure pulling back. Cut her back. Right there's your ear canal. Just on the other side of the ear canal there's a little piece of meat and then you got skin again. I've got my fingers on the back side feeling so I know how thin or thick it is. We're down to the skin now. So that ear butt's loose. Same thing on the other side. So both ear butts are cut off the skull. Continue skinning down the side of the deer's neck along the meat. So that backside's opened up. Now we're going to work around the burr of the antler. That's where this little curved knife comes in handy. Okay. Light pressure on your V-flap and go right into the bone. You're going to hook it just under your burr and just keep light pressure pulling both sides. Just keep skimming that forward. When I get to the front of it, I'll usually stop because you can't get any further without skinning the back sides. So I got the front side of my burr skinned. Same thing on the back side. Light pressure pulling. The whole time I'm keeping my blade against the bone. Okay, you get out away from the bone, you're going to start cutting through the skin. Just keep pulling that fascia back. So, my left side I got free around the antler, it's skinned all the way around. Um, I've not yet come to the eye. Okay. So that's skinned off there. We'll go ahead and do the same thing on the right side. So now my height is free of the antler, okay? From this point, um, you can continue to keep him out on the ground. Um, I've kind of found that getting him up, um, usually a hook through the neck on a chain or a rope, you can hang him by his antlers if you have to. The antlers are not gonna come off. Um, get him up and use the weight of your hide uh, to finish caping him out. So from here, I'm gonna hang him up on a hook. Just make sure your hook's through a big piece of meat. So now, again, I'm using gravity. The weight of the, the hide's gonna help me cape this deer out. Gravity is your friend. Yes, so I'm gonna come back, back to the back side of my meat. And you can see the fascia there where that hide's wanting to pull away from the meat. 
keep your blade turned in toward the meat prevents you from running a hole in your hide if there's meat on the hide it's a lot better than a hole in the hide so the taxidermist will end up cleaning it off anyways I am using gentle pressure pulling down too. Again, it helps. It helps with separating it. So I'm pretty much off my neck and I'm to the skull now. I'm taking my, so I'm on the, the right side of the deer here. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to use my right hand, and I'm sticking it up under the hide, and I can feel, feel where the, the eye socket is. And I use my, my index finger and my thumb more to feel, okay? So I'm feeling here, but I know I'm coming up on the eye orbit. Right there's bone, okay? Keep skinning that fascia back. This is probably going to be the the scariest part for you guys is the most challenging part. Everybody's worried about cutting through the, the eye. But just take your time. Um, again, using my finger on the underside, kind of pulling away from the eye, thumb on top. Keep your knife toward the orbit, okay? Just little strokes peeled away. You can see where the eye socket is right there. I just cut through, and you can see the eye, and I got plenty of tissue. There's my finger, okay? So I know I'm not cutting any more there. I just keep working my way around the orbit. Okay, now I got the, the whole eye socket opened up. From there, just you can see the fascia, just keep working your way around. Now, down to the base of the eye duct. Again, I'm gonna use this hand and pull. Pull with pressure and keep my knife close to the bone. Okay light pressure, and you pop that eye duct right out. Okay, them are kind of probably gonna be your two most challenging or most, you know, the scariest things for a hunter to, oh, I don't <laughs> wanna ruin it. Okay, right. take your time there, you'll be just fine. Um, again, seeing your fascia, the way it separates, just keep skinning it down. So I got that side done, we're gonna work onto the, the right side, or the left side. I switch hands, it just makes it easier for me, the antler's in my way, so same thing, we're skinning down along the face. I find my orbit, using my other hand, just a little back pressure on it. And there's my eye, light pressure pulling back. Again, keep your blade in tight toward the bone when you get to the eye duct. Light pressure pulling. And you'll pop that eye duct right out. Uh, white tail are fairly simple. You get into mule deer and elk, they got it a little deeper eye duct. It's probably gonna take you a little bit more pressure, a little bit more time getting it popped out. If you cut it, it's not ruined, okay? <laughs> I'm speaking for myself um, as a taxidermist. You never like to fix mistakes or holes that aren't right. necessary, but it is repairable. Okay. And we all put holes in them so, at some yeah. point or yeah. <laughs> um, From that point, both eyes are loose, eye ducts are out. We're going to keep working down the face. Again, you can see that fascia, and that's where I'm keeping the sharp part of my blade. Just separating the skin from the, the bone there. Okay. We can see the bottom jaw here. Mm -hmm. Here's the top. This tissue in between is the inside of your cheek. Okay. I usually will take my knife above my hide. Okay, go up about an inch and a half. Run it through, and you'll open it up. You'll see the teeth. This is the inside of the mouth. Hmm. And again, I'm just taking my blade against the bottom jaw bone and against the top. And I peel that open. Okay. 
don't be afraid to get your hands in there. You ain't gonna bite you. Okay. <laughs> Not at this just point. don't. And again, I just uh, through the whole process, I like to use a little back pressure pulling. Okay, it separates the skin from the the muscle or the bone. So that side's opened up. Flip to the other side, and we'll skin him down just a touch more. And if it makes you nervous coming down, like, oh, I don't want to cut through, you can start separating up here, mm -hmm. and you'll be just fine. Um, I'm just skinning my preference, leaving myself a little flap to work with. So I got both sides open along the jaw. Okay, you got the inside of that mouth, that cheeks there. We're gonna skin down the bottom jaw first and skin it right off. Again, just light pressure, keep pulling. This is where having it hung up kind of helps, sure. okay, compared to doing it on the ground, you're flopping it back and forth. It's the same process if you're on the ground, it's just you don't got uh, the hide doing most of the work for you. Again, just keep that blade along the bone, pulling back. There, that bottom jaw is skinned off. Okay, plenty of lip tissue, lip skin all the way around for your taxidermis. From there, we'll go ahead and skin the top side off. Keep following that fascia as you pull it away. Now you're coming down. You've got the ridge bone of the top skull, and now you got your nose. This is all cartilage, okay, soft tissue. What I like as a taxidermist is I'm going to come just past the hard bone, and I'm going to cut into that cartilage, okay. From there, use that bone, that nose bone, as a guide. I'm just going to turn my blade and start coming right down the the face of that nose, okay? So I'm using that that bone as a guide. You get to the front of it, just keep it toward the bone, keep working, and there we pop it off. You've got plenty of tissue, and then your skull skinned out. Just like that. So when you look at it inside out, you got your ears, your opening for your antler burr, eye ducks, eyes, lips are all intact. Taxidermist be tickled pink. Okay. Um, from this point, my recommendation: go ahead and turn it skin side in. So if my cape's laying here, I got him laid right back together. Okay, and we're just going to roll it up and drop it in a deep freeze. Okay, you can lay them ears in, roll them up in a ball, get them right in the freezer, and uh, you'll be good to go. So. Sweet. Okay, now if we were to skull cap, we're going to get the deer mounted. I think I'm going to do your euro with this, yep. but if, if I was going to get the deer mounted, what's the next step? Uh, let me find a find the saw. Yeah, we'll see that. Yeah. Okay, so if we're gonna, if you're getting the deer mounted, um, to meet our regulations, it needs to be skull cap. That being said. Um, more is better. Um, so we talked about your hide. If you can bring the whole hide into the taxidermist like this, you're better off. You're not shorting yourself. Um, same with skull capping him. So typically if I want somebody to skull cap it, I want a little bit more there than is actually needed. So I'm going to come kind of to the back side of the, your eye orbit. Um, if you draw a line straight across, if you got a cell all, it makes it light work but cut straight down 
So I'm going to cut straight down uh, just past the eye orbit. Okay. From there, I'm going to come on the back side. Okay. You can see where this deer, this is the base of my skull. Okay. It makes a little ridge right there. From there, the spine comes off. Come right on the back side of the, the knob of the skull, the back side of the skull. And now we're going to draw a line straight through to the middle of the eye orbit. Okay. Okay. Um, that will release your skull cap. Um, let me pull one down. Yeah, yeah. Right. So here's a deer that's been skull capped. Um, I skinned and caped this one, so I cut it to my measurements. Um, again, I would be tickled pink if more came in um, than what's on this. That way, I can cut it down to what I want. Sure. Um, looking at it from the underside, again, to meet our requirements, you need to clean that brain out. Any residue. Um, you can dry it down and you'll be just fine. Um, but bring your cape in like that, bring your antlers in like this, and uh, you'll meet Ohio's regulations. So. Okay, now here's another question back to if I'm gonna get the deer mounted or uh, Euro mounted. <laughs> so I've got, this, I've got it done to this point, yes. well now what do I do? It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I really, and I'll be honest with you, um, I don't have a good answer for a European. Right. That's one of the glitches that, because the, uh, legally to move it across state lines, the grain has to be removed. Right. And if you're going to do a European or a skull mount, um, you'll be transporting the brain across state right. lines. Um, so that's one we may need to get a hold of the DNR. Yes. Uh, check with. Uh, if you're from out of state or you're a local guy going out of state, um, hunting western game or anything, check with your local DNR wildlife officer and ask, say, hey, I might be wanting a European one. How do I go about doing this? Right. Um, that would probably be your best bet. Okay. And we can go from there. So, but well, maybe we'll just shoot, shoot them big enough that we you know just we're going to get them out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. No, we'll, we'll have to research that because so. I just thought about that. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that before. Going out hunting, when we transport our stuff across, it's kicked out, looks just like that, it's wrapped in a garbage bag, and it's on the, on the luggage rack yeah. of the yeah. trucks, and that's no more. Yeah, that's going to have to change. Yeah, it's, right? we've, I had a couple last year, mule deer that were skull capped. They wanted Europeans. We were able to use real bone skull capped skulls and work them antlers back in to do a European, but kind of going a long way around to getting what you want. Right. Um, if it's intact, it's, from my perspective as a taxidermist, you're better off. But So we'll have to get back to you on yeah. that, <laughs> I guess is what we're saying. If you want to get your deer mounted or Euro mounted, do a European mount, how do you remove the brain tissue and, and what's left of the spinal tissue? That's a good question. I'll find out. <laughs> I'll try to find out and get back to you. Right. Um, cool. That's it. I that's mean, it. Yeah, that's, that's it. pretty. It's a lot of guys are scared of it, but it's really right. not not too difficult. No. So sharp knife. If you got a dull knife, you're gonna you're gonna chase your tail. Right. Um. Sharp knife. Just be careful so you don't cut your fingers off. So I mean, other than that, that yeah, right. it's kind of a double edge. But well, cool, man. Well, we appreciate you going over what you go through and helping us out with what we need to do. Uh, if we travel out of state and for those of you again check yeah. with your dnr for your state your dnr officer um the local guy there and and see what you have to do to stay yeah. legal because nobody wants a ticket for no nope. any reason no nope. yep and again if you got a taxidermist get a hold of them they'll let you know what they're looking for right um and they could probably even give you some pointers too sure so Sure. Well, thanks, man. We appreciate yep. it, and no hopefully we'll be bringing you a few so. deer yet this year. So, cool.
All right, guys and gals, we obviously would have loved to have posted this video up earlier as uh, we are already three weeks deep into deer season here in Ohio. And of course, other states open earlier than us, but um, better late than never, I guess. Uh, anyway, as we mentioned at the end of our time there with Josh, we had a question come up when it comes to a European mount and bringing an entire skull, uh, antlers attached, or whether it was a doe that you wanted a European mount back into the state and what to do there because it's not specifically spelled out in the Ohio Revised Code. Um, so anyways, I placed a call with the, to the Division of Wildlife, just got off the phone with them, and all the same rules apply in regards to removing brain and soft tissue from a skull, whether you're doing a European mount or just a skull cap to mount a deer. Um, so that being said, I thought it would also be a good idea to go ahead and read through the Ohio Revised Code, uh, that portion that uh, pertains to cervid carcass regulations. Um, so bear with me as I read through this. We'll go over a couple of things uh, as I go through it. Um, but this is Rule 1501, 31-19-02, Cervid Carcass Regulations of the Ohio Revised Code. A. Any person may possess all or any part of a cervid carcass legally taken, killed, or processed in Ohio unless the carcass is taken from an area of Ohio that is posted on the division website at wildohio.gov. Any person may possess all or part of a cervid carcass from Ohio that is legally taken, killed, or processed within an area published by the division and posted on the division website at wildohio.gov, provided that all or any part of the cervid carcass possessed remains within the posted area. Essentially what this portion of the rule is talking about is there is a place, um, an area within Ohio that is, I believe it's in East Central Ohio, where there was a high fence operation, a deer farm, in which they found CWD. They have established a surveillance area within so many miles around uh, that farm where you cannot take any deer parts out of that area. They're monitoring the wild herd to make sure that uh, it has not contracted CWD so far that they, so far they haven't found it and obviously are hoping it remains that way. Um, but for now you cannot um, take any deer parts that are killed within the area out of that area. You can find more information on where that area is and all the rules that pertain to it at wildohio.gov. Moving on, 31-19-02B. No person shall possess all or any part of a cervid carcass from an area outside of Ohio unless the carcass is kept in the area where legally taken, killed, or processed, except when the cervid carcass consists only of any of the following. 1. Deboned meat. 2. Meat that is cut and securely and completely wrapped, either commercially or privately, with no part of the spinal column or head attached. 3 quarters or other portions of meat with no part of the spinal column or head attached. Four, antlers. Five, antlers attached to a skull cap from which all soft tissue has been removed. Six, upper canine teeth from which all soft tissue has been removed. Seven, hides and capes without any part of the head or lymph nodes attached. Eight, finished taxidermy mounts. Nine, any soft body tissue wrapped and packaged for use by a diagnostic research laboratory. So that's pretty much uh, exactly what we went over with Josh. Um, you can bring meat back, you can bring quarters back, but there can be no spinal column, no soft tissue from the head, including brain matter with your carcass, with your meat. Um, you've got to have all that stuff removed. So it would behoove you to check with um, your state's rules and regulations if you live outside of Ohio and it would probably be a wise idea to um, check with a taxidermist that is local to the area that you're going to be hunting to find out if they can help you out, what it might cost you, um, if you're not comfortable skull capping or caping your own deer out. Um, that way you can um, follow all the rules that pertain to your particular state. So next one, 31-19-02C. Any person may transport any cervid carcass or part of cervid carcass legally taken or processed from outside of Ohio through Ohio, provided this, the carcass or parts thereof is not offloaded from the vehicle in which it entered the state. Essentially what that means is if I lived in New York, drove my truck out to Illinois, shot a deer, 
I can load that deer in my truck and drive it through the state of Ohio back to New York. What I cannot do is offload that deer carcass and transload it to another truck, put it um, in a cooler to hang, anything like that. It has to stay on the truck as it left Illinois. You can drive straight through Ohio um, and go back home, but you cannot offload that carcass. Uh, and D, all definitions set forth in Rule 15.01.31-1-02 of the Administrative Code shall apply to this rule. So that's another rule, and all the rules um, for each code apply to each other. So that is pretty much a wrap on our cervid carcass regulations, an update to the video we shot there with Josh. Um, check with your, uh, your own state's Division of Wildlife and check with a, a local taxidermist for the area that you're going to be hunting on their rules, regulations, and if they can help you out. Um, one to also follow up on the website. We're still continuing to work on that. Hope to have it up and running here before too terrible long. Just got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of neat stuff that we think uh, you guys will enjoy. Um, some more how-to videos and, of course, some more hunts will be coming your way shortly. Um, in the meantime, please uh, like, share, and subscribe to our channel, of course, um, and follow us on Instagram and Facebook to see what we might be up to on any given day. Um, but that's going to be a wrap for this video. Um, please let us know what you think. And if you'd like to see more how-tos um, like this, uh, we'll be doing some more gear reviews, etc. And until then, go live the Will Hunt life. Appreciate y'all checking us out and watching.